Jesuit died after she was shot in the head on so Wednesday. Pilots saw this Demarco weekend when they tried to evacuate people from areas cut off by flames. With dozens Within days, they closed the suspected source of the virus. It does feel like we're all in a state of limbo. With fires now closing in from all directions. Where one man has been arrested, a second held as a person of interest. Now, because they are so faithless, they are fearful. You need to ask yourself right now the decisions you're making are they fear based or faith based? Because the fearful are unbelieving. What are you fearing? They'll never get better. I'll never get ahead. I'm going to lose what I've got. You could lose everything you've got today. When fear goes viral, I think we're already there. I think we're already there. Um, I was here last night till well after 11 o'clock helping put some of the finishing touches on this set and as I sat there and looked at it this morning and some of the things that I will have to share either this week or next week, uh, there is a major portion of our nation that this is what the streets look like now. Right now. Right now, where humans are defecating on the sidewalks in front of million dollar homes. Where homelessness is at an all time record high in this nation. People with nowhere to put their head down. The opioid crisis. You can't walk down the street without stepping on needles. And the government's response is we'll just leave it like that because that's humane this is not humane this is not humane so we're going to attack the very spirit of fear because most decisions that are being made from washington dc to wall street to main street to rural america are fear-based they are not faith-based. We are a people running scared. And when people are afraid, they're angry. When people are afraid, they're unkind. When people are afraid that they can't feed their children, they will steal from you. When people are afraid of what you might do to them, they're going to do to you before you have an opportunity to do for them. We are running like frightened animals, but no more. Because I discovered a thing. Perfect love casts out all fear. I'm going to try again. Perfect love casts out all fear. Say it. One more time. Now turn to somebody next to you and say, regardless of what you look like, regardless of how afraid of you I may be, I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. And when I love you, fear will leave me. When I love you, fear will leave me. When I love you, fear will leave me. You can be seated. I want to share with you the most commanded two words in your Bible. The two words that God himself commands us over 365 times in the Bible. The most commanded command by God himself are these two words. Fear not. Shout those words. Shout them like God is shouting them at you right now. Say it again to your mind. Say it to your body. Say it to your future. Say it to your past. Say it to your children. 
Say it when you get up in the morning. Say it when you go to bed at night. Say it when you bless your food. Now isn't it interesting that if God himself would make a command over 360, that's more than one a day. More than one time a day, God, from his word, speaks into your heart, fear not. Now here's the thing that becomes apparent to me. If God commands me every day not to fear, it must be because he knows I'm about to be confronted with something that will speak fear into my heart. Because he knew what happened after the fall. Fear replaced faith. Perfect love casts out all fear. The fearful are not faithful. So if you're faithful, you shouldn't be fearful. But since God commands you not to fear one time every day when you throw the covers off of yourself in the morning and get ready to kneel down in prayer, the first thing you will hear God say to you is fear not. No trepidation. No anguish. No pausing. No nervousness. No neurological problems. No nervous problems. No spastic bowel syndrome. Are you with me? No shaking. No wavering. No quaking. And know this, my dear brother and sister, there's about to be something face you today and tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday that God himself knows would make an ordinary person fearful but he knows you will not fear because he said to you the reason fear thou not why not I am with thee I dare you to shout right now God is with me Woo! the only thing that will drive out fear is fellowship with God through Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit you're not going to find it in yoga you're not going to find it in meditation you're not going to find it in exercise you're not going to find it on a psychiatrist's couch you're not going to find it in an antidepressant pill where you're supposed to find your faith is in none other than the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cruel angry biting being of a Calvary just for you so somebody shout I will not fear I have faith now if you get in the word fear will dissipate you don't believe me hear the sweet psalmist of Israel the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. My cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's shout with David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? John 10.10 10, The thief came to kill and steal and destroy. But here a resurrected Christ. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Sufficient in quantity. Superior in quality. Shout it. Fear not. Have faith. Give him praise. Give him glory. Mm. 
Uh, Isaiah 58, 12 in your Bible. Isaiah 58, 12. For those of you that have not followed our ministry for a while, you will not immediately recognize this verse. However, for those of you that have been here more than three weeks, been tuning in for more than a month, some of you will remember this hallmark verse, which is a foundation of over 40 years of full-time ministry. Right here it is in Isaiah 58, verse 12. And they that shall be of thee. Now just pause right there. Don't read anymore. Don't read anymore. Because this is talking about a specific group. This is where the herd has been culled. This is where the flock has been separated. This is where a dividing line has been established between those who are and those who are not. If you've ever seen the great uh, epic film, O oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You will, you will remember the fellow running from mayor says, Is you is or is you ain't my constituency? What he was saying is, what side of the line are you on? In this hour, it will become imperative, watch the bouncing preacher, that you choose sides. You cannot straddle the fence. This gospel that we preach is an offensive gospel. And every backslidden preacher that would say otherwise is a preacher of inclusion. The gospel has never been, the gospel will never be a gospel of inclusion. The diabolical deception which is being perpetrated on most of the church world today is this. Well, if you believe in Jesus, or if you believe in God, then anything goes and we're just going to lock arms in kumbaya. That is another gospel. Well, I don't want to say this. It may offend someone. You better get ready. Because if you get a hold of the real thing, instead of having just enough religion to be inoculated against the real virus, can I tell you that I am infected with a virus? I am infected with a Holy Ghost contagion. It is in the air that I breathe. And if you get around me enough, it's going to get communicated to you. Do you understand? Which will change you into a person person of faith and not fear, which will change you into a person who is unafraid to confront the current culture with the cross of Jesus Christ. I hope Elkhart's shouting because they sure not helping me in here. Many have said well, we're just living in an hour where the devil is keeping people away from church. I think the exact opposite is true. I think the devil is doing everything in his power to populate, to overflowing every church that preaches a false gospel. That's what I think. And the gospel of inclusion is the worst one of all. I do not have to be like you to win you. I do not have to participate in your sin to introduce you to Jesus. I don't have to be cool. I just have to be anointed. Freedom is, get this down. Tweet this, you ready? Freedom is never granted voluntarily by the oppressed 
Sometimes folk fall in love with their chains. Over the next few weeks, there are going to be thousands upon thousands of people who are going to be set free from bondages they didn't even know they had. Okay, I'm going to try this side over here. Somebody is going to get free from a bondage and the chains are going to fall off of you from something you didn't even know you were bound by. But we've been in prayer, my dear brother and sister. And when you get to praying, the junk comes to the surface. Somebody bring me a drink of water. Stay right here with me. At some point, somebody's got to say, enough is enough. At some point, somebody got to stay in their seat and say, I'm not just about ready to go to the back of the bus. I'm not just about ready to allow fear to invade my life. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody shout with me right now while I cut the head of the diabolical demon called fear. In fact, in fact shall fear, fear. Come, out. come out. Do you know why? When I took my first trip into the, into the southern United States as a small boy, my daddy got in a brawl at a filling station. You used to call them filling stations or service stations. <laughs> you ain't got enough money to fill your tank anymore, so they abdicated that. <laughs> Nor do they have any service. So that's gone. Well, when I first went down there in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, South Georgia, North Carolina. When I went through those, that area, where are you going? <laughs> now, he didn't come back up here because he's afraid of me. He came back up here because he loves me and wants to serve me. It's a very different thing. Watch this now. Freedom is never granted voluntarily by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Somebody has got to put their plate down, push their chair back, stand up, and point their finger under the nose of cancer, under the nose of poverty, under the nose of anger, under the nose of fear, and tell the devil, you just not about ready to take it no more. I thought I heard a church. Or you can just continue to put up with your migraine, continue to put up with your bad back, continue to put up with trying to figure out how you can steal your tithe because you ain't got money to pay it. Or or somebody can get mad. Somebody can turn the table on fear. And the greatest of all, the fear of death. Somebody, when I went down through there, we would stop at a filling station and there would be three restrooms. Go to the trouble of building three restrooms. With a sign hanging on. What said, white men, white women, and another word that began with an N. And if you think it's dead, you're wrong. It's just in disguise. But I can tell you where it is dead. 4595 Gender Road, Columbus, Ohio is dead up in here. 
Because somebody got tired. Do you know why people would go to that third restroom? Because they were afraid not to. They were dominated by fear. No more poverty, no more sickness, no more sin, no more demon, no more depravity, no more disease, more joy, more peace, more victory, more hope, more blessing, more provision, more protection. If God be for me, who can be against me to hell with fear? I will fear nothing but God. Woo. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every fearful foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Give him praise, give him glory. Isaiah 58 12. They that shall be of thee. Let me, let me shock you now. Everybody is not of us. Everybody that sings a worship song is not of us. If they're singing it out of a homosexual spirit, they are not of us. If they're sleeping with their boyfriend and telling God they're sorry instead of repenting, they're not of us. If they're getting drunk before they get on the platform, they're not of us. If they are racist, they are not of us. We're in the last days, ladies and gentlemen. The hot are getting hotter and the lukewarm are getting frozen. God said, I would that you were hot or cold. For if you are lukewarm, I will regurgitate you. Many will stand before him on that day. Lord, Lord, in your name we cast out devils. In your name we spoke with other tongues. In your name we healed the sick. In your name we raised the dead. And he will say, I appreciate that. I appreciate you using my name because that's where the power came from because I never knew you. No, I'm, I'm doing my best. You see that? They that shall be of thee. God exalting. Here's a good dividing line. They that shall be of thee shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will 
take up serpents, they will stop the mouths of lions. If they drink in a deadly thing, it will not harm them. You better get ready, because there's coming a time when you're going to be walking down the street in a major city like San Francisco in California and step your little sandal wearing foot on an infected needle laying on the sidewalk next to human defecation and if you're not full of the Holy Ghost you're gonna die but there will be those that will pass through the fire and it will not kindle upon them there will be those who will pass through the flood and it shall not overflow them it's time to choose sides darling it's time to know in whom you have believed and be fully persuaded that he is able to keep everything you've committed to him against that day So when God says, fear not, and you look around you, your response would be, why not? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some why nots with you. Why shouldn't I be afraid? 8,000 teenagers a day are acquiring sexually transmitted diseases in America. Eight thousand a day and you think it'll never happen to your little flower so you operate in a spirit of fear rather than a spirit of faith Pakistan is the most dangerous place in the world to preach the gospel why aren't they afraid? Stand up. Why aren't you afraid? What? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your light. The Lord is your salvation. Of whom shall you be afraid? If they can go to Pakistan, how come you can't go next door? How come you can't bring your who? I didn't say your boo. How come you can't bring your who? Because you're afraid. You're afraid. And you don't even realize you are. They that shall be of the, I love this part, shall build the old waste places. Uh, uh, the more accurate translation is, they that shall be of you shall build the old churches. They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. The actual translation is the war ravaged ruins left desolate and inhabited only by demons. Principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. You're afraid to go next door and win your neighbor to Jesus, but you're not afraid to go sit in a horror film. You call that fun. Because there is time, and now is, when they call good evil and evil good. You're quiet. 
you're quiet. War ravaged ruins left desolate, inhabited only by demons. Do you understand there are certain sections of our nation today that are ruled by demon power? Overlording spirits that like a marionette let me bring it closer. There are folks sitting in the pews with the same marionette strings attached. Bible says these are they who are taken captive by the devil whenever he wants to. Wreaking havoc. Killing and stealing and destroying. While we sing love songs to Jesus in clothes that looked like they were put on with a spray paint can. It would be funny if it wasn't so tragic. Christian entertainment is not the gospel. It's not the same thing. <laughs> but they that shall be of thee shall build the old ways places they shall be called the repairers of the breach the restorers of paths to dwell in if that's you, you got 12 seconds to get on your feet and let God know you in that side. I mean, 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested. For this purpose, he did not say for these purposes. He said for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy terrible translation that he might annihilate let me show you the difference in destroy and annihilate what you're seeing right here is annihilation is destruction it is not annihilation what happened on Abaco Island what happened on Abaco Island that was annihilation no sewer no water no homes no churches no schools no restrooms no filling stations no gasoline no automobiles nothing to cause to cease to be as though it never existed the purpose of jesus christ is to annihilate cause to cease to be as though it never existed Cancer, hatred, bigotry, racism, lawlessness, pride, anger. I don't know if you're up to it or not. Here's the greatest news I can tell you. Every single person you meet this week is scared to death. They're scared to death. Be seated. So Jesus' purpose was to annihilate. What must our purpose be? If Jesus' purpose is to annihilate, then what is our purpose? Our purpose is to demonstrate that annihilation. In other words, you're supposed to be walking on top of this stuff. You're supposed to be walking above this stuff. You're supposed to be that city set on a hill that out of the tragedy and the travesty, the trial and the debilitating circumstances of current life, men and women can look up out of the rubble and out of the darkness and out of their plight and sorrow and see a light shining on a hill. Shout, that's me. I'm going to demonstrate I'm going to demonstrate what Jesus annihilated. He 
here's where we are today America is rolling in luxury reveling in excess revolting in morals rotting in sin but what's to be expected in a nation where passion has become nothing more than a riderless horse where lust is exalted to lordship where satan is worshiped as a saint where sin is simply swept under the carpet blind leaders of the blind man is magnified above his maker the crisis is acute the danger is imminent the time is now something must happen deep in the heart of every man woman boy and girl it's revival or wrath repent or perish it is christ or chaos today look at your neighbor and say uh why are you here? At my age, questions haunt you. If somebody could just give me some water and set it up here somewhere where I can get to it, that would just be a blessing. Thank you so much. If you'd open it for me, that'd be great. Bless you, my son. <laughs> Ask the person next to you, why are you here? Are you here because your salvation is a fire escape? Are you serving Jesus because you're afraid to go to hell? If you are, you'll never last. Why are you here? Why? Why are you here? Mm. Uh, let me answer that question for you by first telling you why you're not here. You're not here because you answered an advertisement. You're not here because you came to a conclusion. You're not here for any of those reasons, you're here for a purpose that traces way, 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 way back. Back, back before your parents pondered matrimony. Back before your grandparents had a gleam in their eye. Way back, way back to the origin of purpose and the very meaning of life itself long before the first solar systems were sent spinning and singing into prehistoric space long before the first hydrogen and oxygen molecules met and made the first molecule of water that dripped out from the heavens long before the coupling of the first seed and egg in the condition we commonly call conception there was a far different conception that occurred in the heart and the mind of the creator of all things that culminated in the expanse of time and space and resulted in the person walking the earth right now that you call you. You were born. Born. Shout it. Born. Shout it again. Born. That very word carries with it the connotation of hope and promise. The hope of every person is simply to find out the reason they were created. That's what everybody is searching for. That's why there are more neo-Nazi groups in America today than there have ever been in the history of our nation. And there are more black activist groups alive today in America than there have ever been in the history of our nation. There is a greater divide between the donkey and the elephant than there has ever been. There is a greater divide among men and women than there has ever been. There is hatred and bitterness and finger pointing and ridicule and lying on every hand because nobody knows why they're here.
and because they don't know they are overwhelmed with fear they don't know their purpose they know what pleases them but rarely does purpose ever please I have not done what I've done for 43 years because it feels good or it seemed right in my own eyes I'll tell you why for the same reason that ancient Jeremiah was born bearing his purpose for the some some like Esther Oh, there are a lot of those, I, I may have been in that bunch, who have their purpose thrust upon them. There are the, those others like the Apostle Paul who embrace their purpose in a moment of epiphany. That's it. There are many like me who actually arrived at their purpose through a seemingly insignificant series of seemingly insignificant events. I did not start out to do this. This was never a thought in my mind. All I wanted to do was serve Jesus. All I wanted to do was be obedient. And here I ended up. So we... So so you were born right if you were born just shout and wave you know you were born well i got half of you elkhart if you were born wave your hands thank you you were born but we can't leave that statement hanging in midair by itself because if you were born doesn't reveal your purpose it just means you're here <laughs> so we can't leave it there any more than we can breathe in without breathing out because exchange is the process of life so you were born but let's add another word let's say you were born to teal as in toward meaning movement men are not minerals with no movement they're not vegetables with no vision you were not born to bounce around on the ping pong table of life at whatever winds of life might decide to assail you you were born to, as in toward a purpose, toward a vision, toward a passion, toward movement. Two letters. Toward. Toward a goal. Toward an expectation. Toward a destination. Toward a divine purpose. So we were born to. Great. Born to what? Now, we begin to zero in on purpose. Born to what? Uh, just touch your neighbor and say, you were born to raise. I'm not talking about your children. I'm not talking about crops. I'm not talking about peas and taters. I'm not talking about a flower garden. I mean, you were, look around, born to raise R-A-Z-E not to build up but to tear down you were born to annihilate you were born to cause it to cease to be as though it never existed you were born to raise not to build to tear down not to establish to eliminate not to replace but to reduce to zero to make it unrecognizable to make it in capable of ever being put back together after you by faith have annihilated it I thought I heard somebody shout 
Okay. So we were born, shout it, to raise what? Hell. You were born to raise hell. I need you to stand up on your feet and look somebody you don't know and tell them, I was born to raise hell. Now tell them, don't get your hell too close to me. Because I was born to destroy it, born to annihilate it, born to overcome it, born to overwhelm it, born to make it cease to be as though it never existed. Let fear lie limp on the shoulder of God. We came to raise hell. I'm not talking about that place of the eternal incarceration of the doomed and damned hopeless and helpless hordes of humanity lost in eternity without God falling, 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 spiraling downward, downward into the dark and fiery lapping lane, lakes of hell I'm not talking about that I'm talking about that hell in your life I'm talking about your rebellious teenager. I'm talking about your poverty. I'm talking about that ringing in your ears. I'm talking about that tumor in your breast. I'm talking about your poverty and your need and your lack and your want and your disease. I'm talking about your fear. Hey, Jesus, I'm talking about annihilating, raising hell against the forces of darkness that surround us every day. We don't realize it. We are walking through this mess every day all day we're surrounded by their filth where the atmosphere is supercharged with their lust. You can't get on an airplane without having to smell their booze. You can't go into a building without choking half to death on their smoke. People act like they're on a lifeline with that stuff. You watch them run outside a public building. They can't get the thing lit fast enough. And you don't think you're in bondage? If you're not in bondage to it, lay it down. Don't pick it up for the next seven days. If you're not in bondage to pornography, how about you give your computer away and use a dial phone instead of a computer in your hand? We're living among this stuff. We are taking our beautiful, powerful, mighty... God-given, recreated, Holy Spirit selves and allowing this filth to be dumped all over us all day long with no thought. You think Deborah George and the Valor students wade through the mess at Miller Kelton? How about we send her to your house? How about we examine your reading material? How about everybody just turn in your entire social media feed to Pastor Rod this week and I'll read it for you. How about I'm a silent listener to every conversation? Well, number one, thank God he didn't call me to that. But I can tell you who he did call. The Holy Spirit. Because he's with you when you're lying. He's with you when you're cheating. He's with you when your mouth sounds like a drunken sailor.
He's with you. When he touches your heart, why don't you give a track to that person? Yeah. I don't know if that's me or not. You think Deborah's brave? You're walking in this mess all day, every day. It fills your life through that screen. It invades every part and portion of your thought process. Why don't you get on that thing faster to bless somebody than to try to present a vision of yourself that everybody, including you, knows is not true? It's quiet in here. I thought, man, I thought I was, I thought I was with a group of people that understood they were of us and we are born to raise hell. We're living in a time when lonely little leaguers and cheerless cheerleaders and hopeless housewives agonize over the abandonment of the men in their lives. But we were born to raise hell. We're walking in the midst of 2%, 2% of the population that we have to now witness kissing each other of the same sex in virtually every advertisement that comes on the television screen and we've now got a man running for the highest office in the world who greets his crowd by lip kissing the man that he's married to why are you quiet I remember in 2004 when I stood up here with a sign that said defend marriage. I remember walking the halls of every congressman and every senator in the United States. I remember talking to the president. I remember telling George W. Bush, you cannot let this happen. You have to defend the Defense of Marriage Act. He promised he wouldn't, didn't do a thing to do it. Then Barack Obama comes on the scene and his contribution is to set up a defense of women. To which I responded, what about a defense of men? I mean, we all about equality, aren't we? I thought we all about equality. Well, how come there are 74 women and in, in 73 men in college to every 100 women? How come women lead the job market? You're quiet. Why have there been 30% more women get master's degrees and bachelor's degrees in the last 40 years than men? Seem like I'm being discriminated against. Why is it quiet? Oh, you must be in the teacher union or the other union or the union union. You better start standing up, man. You think I'm going to stand here and defend people that say it's all right to kill a baby after it's been delivered? You in the wrong place. Two percent. Two percent of the population demanded a redefinition of the biblical standard of marriage in America and we let it happen. Go back and look. Every weak need, milk sop, milk toast, jelly livered politician that at one time stood up for life have now turned their back on it. Here's a question you ought to ask yourself. Where'd they go after you elected them? Can you imagine it? I am living in an America where so-called believers 
allowed marriage, the union of a man and a woman, to be ripped up and thrown away. And now you're called a bigot, a racist, and a homophobe if you lift up your voice and say, I don't believe that the office, the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. should be filled with a man kissing his husband on stage. And you won't even clap about it. You want me to say it? Well, how about I feel some strength behind me? I got to let you go. Well, I'll see if you're back next week and bring somebody with you. Because when I preached this thing the first time, I couldn't get through three lines without people shouting their brains out. The risers were full and there were folding chairs in here. But everybody's afraid now. We have one standard. There's one way to heaven. One. One. An 11 year old boy that raped a 13 year old girl and then beat her to death in his trial said well I thought it was okay it's okay for the president maybe I ought to just quit pastoring uh, maybe I'll just quit. Do something else. I'm not going to drag you kicking and screaming. We're going to stand up for righteousness or we're going to sit down. We're going to raise up an army that's going to raise hell or we're going to sit down. We're going to get mad when service ends or we're going to sit down. We're going to show up to pray against the principalities and powers that are at work all around us or we're going to sit down. We're going to live holy or we're going to sit down. We're going to throw our booze away or we're going to sit down. We're going to get off our nicotine or we're going to sit down. We're Oh, the, 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 yeah, the shouts are getting much, much more quiet. I don't want to live in a nation I don't recognize anymore. And don't you dare point your finger in Washington, D.C. and blame it at them. You better point your finger at every backslidden preacher and pulpit and entertaining singer in America. And when that filth comes on the television, you better turn it off and gather your family around you and open your Bible and tell your children what's going on. You better be checking their internet. You better put a tracking device on their cell phone. Because if you think they telling you true, you about the craziest human I ever met. Let me show you where that kind of thing ends up. Show me Johnny's sister. Show me. It'll take just a second. Remain standing. There. What day was that? Last Sunday? Last Sunday. That's Johnny's 16 year old sister. Tried to get her to God a thousand times. 
whole family without God except Johnny. That's her ear detached from her head. 42 broken bones. Broken sternum. Hip busted in three places. Busted femur, broken wrists, broken elbows. Ribs, puncturing lungs, filling the lungs with blood. Well, that didn't happen in church. That happened out with her Bring your, what? No. Bring your bestie. She was out with her boyfriend and, and two other friends. Y'all listening to me? Sitting there staring at me like dead people. Sixteen years old, forty-two broken bones, two of the four dead. Thought it would be fun on a rainy night to drive an automobile in excess of 120 miles an hour. Lost control. Two dead, one walked away. What's her name again? Huh? Jaden. We've been going and praying with Jaden. I don't know if we have a more recent picture or not. We've been going and praying for her. And my prayer, my prayer, there's Ashton. My prayer is that God will use this thing. And I claim every member of that family for the kingdom of God. God gives you a wake-up call like that. You better set your alarm. Let's pray right now. Stretch your hands. Let's pray for every member of that family to receive. Come on, I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you pray. That could be your 16-year-old. That could be your 14-year-old. You don't know where they are. Well, I'm going over to Sally's. They ain't been to Sally's for the last six months. Come on. Come on. Come on. Call them into the kingdom. Now call every person in your family into the kingdom. Don't you dare be afraid of the devil. You tell the devil right now you mean business. Get his hands off your family. Every time I say, but we were, you shout, born to raise hell. But we were. No, you're not shouting it, but we were. Born to raise hell. But we were. Born to raise hell. Terminal disease destroys the peace and prosperity of millions, but we were. Divorce deals a deadening blow to the happiness and harmony of a healthy home, but we were. Entertainers and NFL stars strut across center stage spawning new images of immorality and indecency and idolatry. But we were media moguls multiplying messages glorifying and glamoring, uh, glamorizing everything that's unholy and unworthy and unclean. But we were educators take our tax dollars, steal them really. Free education for everybody. Yeah. Who's going to pay for it? Forgive all the student loans. And Americans not wide enough between the eyes for a mosquito to sit on their nose and stick his feet in their eyeballs. 
Yeah, yeah, forgive all the student loans. Okay, well, you just put Valor Christian College out of business because they got charged to be educated and they took loans to do it. And if they're forgiven, we'll never see a penny. Wake up. Communism in America. Free health care for everybody, including people that came here breaking the law. Ask Pastor Cal how that socialism health care works out for you. You squeal about your taxes? They've got free health care in Canada. And if you got a broken arm, you get to go into a lottery system to see when they can take care of you. But it's free. How many of you ever saw anything other than salvation by the blood of Christ that was free? What kind of taxes you pay in Canada, Pastor Cal? 60%? 60% lowest. But they said it is free. Free? If I got no money. And I owe everybody in the universe. Please tell me how I'm going to give you something free. This is America. Broke. In debt. No, we're just going to pay for everything. Trying to buy a vote with lies that they know are impossible. I don't care. I'm not afraid. I did this when I was 30. Think I'm afraid now? Fastest growing. You think we're not walking through this mess? Fastest growing religion in the world is what? Islam. Not us. But we got time to play. I'm mad. I'm mad at this mess. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to live in it. You can miss this mess. I'm almost done. Educators steal our tax dollars and transform them into treacherous teaching that mold the minds of our young people to despise everything their pastor, their church, and their parents teach them to believe. I refuse to continue to increase taxes to school systems that can't do anything but fail no matter how many tax dollars you give them. I refuse to send my children to government-funded, government-supervised educators who despise everything I teach my children to believe. You're quiet. The abject horror of the American Holocaust called abortion has accelerated over 4,200 lives a day. Kumbaya, my Lord. When's the last time you gave an hour to the women's clinic? You're so anointed.
Why do young girls run to Planned Parenthood? Because they're afraid. Over 33% of all abortions that took place in America last year were performed on a girl that goes to church every Sunday. They're afraid. Well, you don't have to be afraid at the women's clinic. You don't have to be afraid here. Because we were... Drug abuse destroys the dignity of an entire generation, but we were power-hungry politicians push perverted programs in the name of progress, but we were demon possession drags victims to the dungeons of the doomed and the damned, but we were powerless preachers proclaim patronizing platitudes and powerless pablum, but they shall do dress nice. But we were everybody up. This was going to be two weeks. I just made it three or four. Here's some stuff I'm going to talk to you about. Here's the stuff I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, as of February 14th, the death toll from the coronavirus was 1,383 people with 64,000 cases reported in 26 nations. But I'll show you what a bunch of sheep led to slaughter we are. Everybody is, they're, they're the countries. But, but who's telling you this? Who, who's telling you this? In the last 12 months, so 1,300, 1,400 people died of coronavirus in the most recent flu season in America. Do you know how many died? 12,000. Just in America. <laughs> We're dying like flies every day from the flu. While the news media draws our attention to 1,000 people spread around the world. How many, how many cases of flu in the United States this flu season? 22 million. Of which 12,000 died. What's the leading cause of death among 18 to 34 year olds? Automobile accidents. You were close, number two, suicide. A mother over in Logan County, Ohio, went downstairs three weeks ago and took wire and hung her three children in her basement. That's Logan, Ohio. Look at it. Look. How, how come? How come nobody got to her? Why would she do that? Huh? Because we didn't get there. Because we didn't get there. Now maybe she refused. I doubt it. Because somebody that's in that bad of shape will come to Jesus. They will. They, they will come to Jesus. And you say, well, pastor, this is a, this is a discouraging thing. Oh, no. Oh, no, this is not a discouraging thing. This is our opportunity. We were born to destroy this mess, not live among it. To lift up the name of Jesus. To tell people, hear me, perfect love will cast out your fear. You don't need to be afraid. If God is for you, who can be against you? The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. 
Of whom shall I be afraid? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. And I say that to you today. Regardless of what you're afraid of today. I bind up your fear. My Bible says if any two of us on earth agree touching anything that we ask, it shall be done for us by our Father which is in heaven. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind up your fear. I bind up your anger. I speak to those voices in your head. I speak to the ringing in your ears. I speak to that fear deeply embedded in you when you go to bed at night that he may come in there again. I speak to every person that is fearful because you've had an abortion or you paid for somebody to have one. I speak to you now if you're bound by drugs and you're afraid you can't get off. If you're bound by lust and pornography and you think you'll never be free. If you're sick in your body and you're fearful you'll never be healed. I rebuke your fear in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I set you free take 15 seconds and start shouting start clapping start waving declaring decreeing I have no fear I have no fear. He's not going to leave me. But if he does, God will give me one twice as good. I'm not going to go broke. I'm not going to die like my daddy. I'm not going to be addicted like my mother. I break every generational curse off of you in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the one who set you free. Sing something, man. I feel like singing. For there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in name of Jesus it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking the name of Jesus you want to be set free this morning you want to know you're free before you go home don't walk run to this altar come on come on if you need to go home you can go home come on I want to pray with somebody I want to pray with somebody. You're tormented in your mind. You can't sleep. Come on. You want to truly be free. Come on. Come on. There is power. There is power in the name of some more folks that know how to pray to come down here and pray with some of these come on come on some of you leaders come on come on yeah come on to dismiss today you're free to leave whenever you want to go but I just want to pray with these or pray with you I want to see you go home free today I want you to lay down tonight free